Welcome to Liberty Ministries International, a ministry that is dedicated to your personal development and spiritual growth. Here, we equip you with tools and resources that will facilitate your transformation into what God has ordained you to be. And now, Reverend Lara brings you today's inspirational message. God bless you, people of God. God bless you. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you may be logging in from across the world today. Welcome to the gathering of prophetic intercessors. Hallelujah. 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 Who's joining me today as we have a great encounter with God and have a, a momentous time in the presence of God today. I am excited about what the Lord is going to do among us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glorious, glorious one. Welcome, 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 come on in. Come on in and let us pray. As you're coming in, please let me know who you are say something in the comment section type something in the comment section so i can know who you are i am excited for us to fellowship together this afternoon and please help me to share this broadcast invite your friends glory to god invite your friends invite your colleagues invite your neighbors invite everybody hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I'm trying to share it too. That is what I'm doing right now. If you're, if you're wondering what is she doing, I am trying to share this broadcast as well. Please come on in, say something, and let me know where you are called, you are logging in from. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray together. Let us pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have a word for you today. God bless you, my darling sister Stella. Good to see you as usual. Glory to God. Good to see you today. Please help me to invite your friends. Help me to invite everybody. I've got a word for you today. Amen. I have got a word for you today the great encounter i believe i believe very passionately i believe very strongly that you will have an encounter with god today an encounter with heaven today in the name of jesus because i have prayed for you before you got here i have prayed for you i have prayed for you i have interceded for you and i have asked that the lord will give you an encounter i hope that you have come with faith in your heart i hope that you have come with a determination with such determination i hope that you have come with with such expectation today that lord I must have an encounter with you today. I know you've heard me say this all the time, every time, and I think that for as long as we continue to be online, I will continue to say it, that we may have gathered together virtually. Okay, we have gathered virtually, but the presence and power of God is never virtual. He is with you wherever you are, and I have prayed for the outpouring of his presence and his power upon you, wherever you may be logging in from today. Hallelujah. Our God is omnipresent. He is not restricted to a geographical location. His presence is with you there. So I want you to honor the presence of God. I want you to honor the presence of God. Acknowledge his presence. Acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit as we go into a great intercession today hallelujah the lord has showed me uh, some people in the bible who, who had great encounters with him and their lives were forever changed your life is going to be forever changed for the better today in jesus mighty name hallelujah so let's just thank god let's just go into into um into the attitude of of thanksgiving 
to God today because he has brought us together. Let's just begin to thank God. The Bible says that we should enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come today through the blood of Jesus to say thank you for the gift of your presence, to, to say thank you for the privilege of your presence, that we will come directly into the throne room today. Your word tells us that we should call upon you and you will answer us and you will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. So God, we thank you for great and mighty things today. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we come, Father God, with, with a pure heart, as we come, Father God, with a heart of expectation, as we lift our expectations to you today, oh God, Lord, I thank you because you are here. Your word tells us that wherever two or three of, of us are gathered together in your name, there you are in their midst. Father, our gathering together today is in your name. Our gathering together today, even though it is virtual, but it is still in your name. Lord, you are the subject of our affection. You are the object of our affection today. You are the reason why we are gathered today. So I thank you for your presence among us. I thank you for your power over us today in the name of Jesus. I thank you, mighty God, for your power and, and your presence over this service today. Do what only you can do among us, O oh God. Move over us. Father God, I thank you for every hurt and every pain that your people may, may have. <clears throat> Anyone who is in any kind of hurt or pain, I thank you for, for the healings today, O oh Lord, that you will mend the broken hearts today in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for redirection today. I thank you for, for a course correction today. I thank you, Father God, for healings and restorations today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles today, oh God, that you will do the unusual. Lord, that we will have a great encounter with you. Our health will have a great encounter with you. Our families will have a great encounter with you. Our businesses, our careers, our jobs will have a great encounter with you. Our minds will have a great encounter with you today in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for clarity of thought. I thank you for as you touch each and every one, oh Lord, in, 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 a, in an unusual way, in a peculiar way, oh God, that Father, you know where each one hurts and you know the questions in the hearts of everyone. I thank you, Father, that you will answer every question today in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, Lord Jesus. I give you worship. I exalt you because you are faithful. Our God is faithful. Lord, you are faithful because you are what tells us that if we ask you anything according to your will, you hear us. So I thank you because you are hearing us right now. And your word also tells us that when we come to call on you, you will listen to us. So Father God, I thank you that we have your attention today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have your attention today. Lord, we have your ears today. You are listening to us. I thank you, Father God, for those who, are, who will share with you today, who will speak to you today, oh God, the things that they're not even able to say to anybody else. Lord, you are the one who listens to our hearts. You are the one who sees our hearts. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will touch every heart. You will heal every heart. You will bring clarity, oh God. You will bring direction, oh God. We are waiting, oh Lord, for instruction. We are eating waiting, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will direct us, that you will speak to each and every one of us. Be glorified, Father. Hallelujah. And as we go into a time of worship right now, again, oh Lord, we honor your presence. We honor your presence, oh God. And we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what a privilege and an honor to worship at the throne of Jesus. What a privilege and an honor to be called into the throne room. Ha, Father, we thank you. There are no words to describe our gratitude. No words to describe our feelings. But Lord, we know that you see our heart. We know, oh God, that you see the recesses of our heart and you see our gratitude unto you today. We thank you. We lift you high above this service today. We enthrone you over this service today. We ask that you will take control in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Minister Dixon. We say more grace and more anointing upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. That the Lord will continue to blow you as his trumpet across the world. And you will sound the sound of victory. You will sound the sound of victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. 
Amen. So wonderful to see everybody here today. I'm excited. I have a word for you. And we're just going to go straight into it for the rest of the time that is allotted to us this afternoon. We are, we are here to, to discuss about the great encounter. We are here to have a great encounter with the Father. Hallelujah. We are here to have a great encounter and there is no one no one throughout history, either either in the in the ancient history or in the modern history, that has had an encounter with God, that their life remained the same. And I declare and I decree over you that in the name of Jesus Christ, as you encounter God, as you have a momentous time with God today, your life will never remain the same. Hallelujah. So, so our scripture today, our anchor scripture today is from the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 24. That is that is the our anchor scripture, but we are going to be looking at other scriptures today and we are going to be praying from them. Hallelujah. I was so excited the way the Lord was preparing me for this service today and he was telling me a lot of things. And by the way, I have a prophetic word. When I was preparing that the Lord gave me a prophetic word for you today. So I'm going to be releasing this towards the end of the program. So I, I encourage you to stay behind. Hallelujah. I remember Apostle Paul telling, uh, telling uh, Timothy to wage war with the prophecy that he had been given. So I encourage you to stay till the end of the service today because you are going to need this word that is going to be released into your life today so that you can wage war against the enemy when they, when, when they, when they come to antagonize you, when they come to resist you and challenge you, you will need this word to wage a war and win in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible, please. Um, open to the book of Luke chapter 1, and I'm going to read only verse 24. Um, so it says, Now, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself for five months, saying, The Lord has done this for me. She said, In these days, he has shown his favor and taken my disgrace, taken away my disgrace among the people. So the backdrop to this is that Zechariah and Elizabeth, the Bible describes them as righteous people. You know, Zechariah was, was a priest. He, um, he was ministering um, in, in, in the house of God. He, uh, the Bible calls them upright and righteous so it's not that because they have done anything wrong it's not because they're you know of any sin in their lives that they were not able to have a child and in the culture of the of their days in the culture that they were living at the time a woman who who is not had does not have a child it's a disgraceful thing in the, in the in the community it's a disgraceful thing disgraceful thing in the, in her family so and they were old you know they had they had advanced in in age they had advanced in years but but when, when the fullness of time came and your fullness of time has come today in the name of jesus when the fullness of time came as Zechariah was ministering in the house of God, and as you are here in the house of God, and I don't want you to get distracted by saying that this is only virtual. You are actually literally in the house of God right now. So I want you to get your mind engaged with what the Lord is doing here. Be aware, okay? Be aware. Be aware. Don't sleep. Don't 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 go to sleep right now. Don't and that's not physical sleeping. Don't allow your mind to wander away because the Bible says that when Zechariah was ministering in the middle of her of him ministering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and prophesied to him that he was going to have a son, even in his old age, even in Elizabeth's old age, that the fact that Elizabeth was past menopause, it wasn't physically possible. It's not physically, it wasn't physically possible for her to be pregnant again. But I tell you today, in the name of Jesus, as you encounter God, what is not physically, what has not been physically possible for you before will now become possible in the name of Jesus. So that is the backdrop of this scripture, verse 24. I encourage you to read it in your own time. But 
uh, verse 24 is what I want to minister from today. And it says, now, after those days, his wife, Elizabeth, okay, Elizabeth was the wife of Zechariah. He, she conceived. <laughs> Everybody had known her to be barren. In fact, the Bible described her as barren as well. You know, they had known her for being barren, for not having children. She's old. She's old. She's past menopause. She's past everything, everything in, inside of her that could cause her to conceive and, and, and give birth to a child was gone. But that that's never stopped God from doing what he wants to do. You know, he after the, after those days, after the encounter, after Zechariah had an encounter with God, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself for five months saying, the Lord has done this for me. In these days, she said, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. You know, after today, everybody who has derided you and mocked you and looked down on you, they will come to celebrate you. They will, they will have no choice. They will come to celebrate in the name of Jesus. Because what God wants to do in your life today, through this encounter, is to give you an experience that you will never forget. An experience that you will never forget. Amen. You will have an experience that you will never forget. This is going to be a momentous. When I was preparing this, this is what the Lord is saying to me that it's going to be a momentous event in your life, so that there will be occurrences in your life that you'll be able to trace back to this encounter today. There will be occurrences in your life after today, things are going to be happening in your life that you are going to be able to trace back to the gathering of prophetic prophetic intercessors in October 2022 themed the great encounter. And I just pray that you come with faith. Hallelujah. I pray that you have come with, with faith in your heart, that you have not come to hear me, but you have come to hear God because I have nothing to give you. I am only a messenger, but I come fully loaded for you. I come fully loaded for you. I have stayed in the presence of God and he has given me a word for you. Okay, there is going to be an encounter today in the name of Jesus. And to encounter means to run into or, or to come upon or to meet unexpectedly. Okay, it is to run into something or someone. It is to have an experience that you did not prepare for. You know, like you're bumping into somebody on the road that you didn't plan on bumping into them or, 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 or to, to have a chance meeting. So I'm telling you that there is, there is there's something that is going to be activated in your life, in your destiny today, that you, 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 you're not even ready. You're not even prepared. You didn't mean for it to happen. Hallelujah. You just come here with faith in your heart and with an open mind to say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm in your presence today. Hallelujah. And it's going to rain over you. Hallelujah. So this is to tell you that you are in an atmosphere today, right now, where anything can happen. You are in an atmosphere right now where anything can happen. I don't care if you're in your car. I don't care if you're in the supermarket somewhere, at the bus stop somewhere, in your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever, in the hospital room, wherever you are logging in, you are tapping into this great experience from, there is an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere where anything can happen. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? Are you open to it? In this atmosphere right now, anything can happen. And I don't want you to be distracted by the fact that I said that we are online. This is an online service because the presence of God is never virtual. The presence of God is real. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Hallelujah. Because what the Lord said to me is that in this, in this atmosphere, you have experience, you begin to have experiences. It is not going to be um, just after today and that's it. No, this kicks off something in your life. And I want you to be um, sensitive. Yes, that's the word. Be sensitive to the things that are happening around you, to you, for you, to the people around you after today. Because you have experiences that will set off a great chapter in your life. So I hope you have come intentionally, child of God. I hope you have come with faith in your heart. I hope you have come with a determination to not live 
this altar today the same way you came. Because there is fire on this altar. It's a fire of sacrifice on this altar today. And the fire of God has fallen upon this altar. And I pray that you have come intentionally and open and ready. And you are, you are saying, I am not going to leave this place the same way I came. I know that there will be healings today because I have been promised that. The Lord has promised that there will be healings. I don't know if you want to intercede for somebody right now in your life, maybe your friends or your family or your loved ones, whoever they may be, that you know that they are sick. I hope that you will begin to intercede for them because this, in this atmosphere, anything is possible. Anything can happen. Amen. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. There are many people who had encounter with God in the Bible and their lives never remained the same again. Okay. And so we're going to get into some of these people now and we're going to begin to pray. Let us take Jacob for an example to start with. Jacob had an experience. He had an encounter with God in Genesis chapter 32. Where the Bible record, records that he wrestled with God until the daybreak, okay? Until the morning light. He wouldn't let God go. And verse 26 of that account records, and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you bless me. See, this is the determination with, with which you should be standing in this atmosphere right now. You cannot go back the same way you came. J Jacob said to God, to, to the angel that he was wrestling with, no, I am not going to let you go. I, 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 there is no way I will have this encounter. I will meet with you and then I will go back and I will just be telling people about it and they will not be able to see it in my life. No, I am not going to let you go. I am not leaving this place unless you bless me. You cannot go back the same way you came after this encounter. And it is not about, about me, as I said, because I'm only a messenger. It is about the message that, that I have brought to you today. You have to be determined in your heart that there is no way on God's green earth I am going to go away without a life-changing experience today. So let's just begin to pray right now. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to declare, Lord, I want you to open your mouth wherever you may be across the world right now. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I come, I have come to encounter you today. Change my life. Change my story for good. In the same way that he changed the life of Jacob, ask the Lord to change your life for good. Change your story for good. Whatever aspect of your life that you are, that you are looking for God to bring about a change, begin to present it to God today. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go. I am not, there's no, where not, nobody's going anywhere today until you bless me. Ask the Lord to bless you. Father, I thank you. Thank you, oh God. Don't, don't let me leave this place the same way I came. Father God, I declare over your people that as they encounter you today, oh God, there will be a a, a transformation that is evident. There will be a transformation that is evident to all. In whatever area of their lives they are asking you for an encounter. In whatever area of their lives they are asking you for a change. Father God, I decree a change today. I declare a change. You said I will decree a thing that shall be established. Father God, let there be a change. Let there be a transformation. Change their story, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Let there be a transformation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, when I was preparing this, you were talking to me about a turnaround, about a turnaround. Let there be a turnaround in Jesus' mighty name. Let there be a turnaround for the best, oh God, in Jesus' name. Things that man could not explain, things that man do not understand, do it in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the story changer. He is the one who changes your story for good. He's the one who changes your story for good. 
He's one who can change your story for good. Present those areas to him. This is this this is a garden of prophetic intercessors. Prophesy, prophesy into that area right now. Open your mouth and begin to speak. It was like the Lord was saying to Ezekiel in the valley of the dry bones. He said to him, prophesy, because the Lord asked him a rhetoric question: Can these bones live? And uh, uh, Ezekiel said, Lord, you are the one who knows. But the Lord said to him, Open your mouth and prophesy. Open your mouth and prophesy. And the Bible says that. As he prophesied, there was a noise. As you prophesy right now, as you be, open your mouth and begin to speak to those areas, then there is movement. There is, there is a noise. As you begin to prophesy into your health, I declare and I decree for everyone who is sick, for everyone who is carrying any form of disease in their body. I, I prophesy healing. I declare healing, a total healing and complete restoration in the name of Jesus Christ for everyone that has been termed barren. I prophesy today, Masai Shanda, that you will become mother and father of many nations in the name of Jesus. Your story is changing. Your story is changing. Hallelujah. In that scripture that, that, that we're reading, Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 27, uh, uh, verses 27 and 28 says in, in, in our scripture, Genesis chapter chapter uh, 32, verses 27 and 28 says, the man asked him, Jacob, the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. He said, my name is Jacob. Then the man said to him, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and you have overcome your name will no longer be jacob but israel i don't know what name i don't know what label life has placed on you i don't know what tag people have tagged you with but maybe because of your past experiences or maybe because of something that happened in your life and they have tagged that to you i hear right now in my spirit some, some somebody you are called a divorcee you're because you are divorced and because you are divorced people culture and tradition has 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 de determined that you cannot amount to anything good. I lift off that that tag. I in fact I rip it off of your life right now in the name of Jesus. Because the angel said to Jacob, said your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel. There is a change of name. There is a change of destiny. There is a change of story. Right now, begin to declare whatever it is that life has placed on you, whatever name that life has given you that the Lord has not given you, begin to reject it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The, the, the angel said to him. The, uh, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Ask the Lord to remove every negative tag in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to remove every negative label or stigma that life has placed on you and change your reputation for good. And change your reputation for good in the name of Jesus. I remove those stigma in the name of Jesus Christ. The stigma that they have placed on your children. The name that they have placed on your children that the mouth of the Lord has not named. Masale Father God, in Jesus' name, wipe away the tears of this woman. Oh, hallelujah. You are here. And, and society, the society has labeled your children. They call them all sorts of names. And unfortunately, the, the children are playing up to that name. To that tag to that label that the society your community has placed on those children right now by the blood of jesus christ i remove that label i remove that tag in the name of jesus christ i declare and i decree that your children uh, that they are good and the good children the children of the lord anointed and appointed and they will be great in the land in the name of jesus the lord will defend you and he will save your children in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2, the nations will see your vindication and the 
and all the kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. Not the name that the society is, has bestowed on you. Not the name that your, your haters have bestowed on you. Not the name that those who are ignorant has, has, have bestowed on you. But the name, the new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow on you. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is, ask God to change that name today. Let I, I be, begin to declare. Say, Lord, I reject every negative tag and label life has placed on me. I reject those tags. I reject those stigma. I will not live up to them in the name of Jesus. They will not define my life. I declare that those stigma and those, those tags and labels, they will not define your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, I receive the new name that your mouth has called me. The new name that your mouth has called me. Whatever new name that the Lord is speaking over you right now. Begin to receive it in the name of Jesus. Your name shall no longer be failure, but, but, but your name will be called success. Success in everything that you do. Success at home, success in the market, success in your career, success in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, your name shall no longer be called weak, but strong. You are strong. Your mind is strong. Your heart is strong. Your spirit is strong. Your soul is strong. Your, you are strong. You are excellent in everything that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, your health, your finance is strong in Jesus' name. Your family is strong in the name of Jesus. Your name shall no longer be sickness, but health. I feel the Lord so strongly up, 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 upon this one that in the name of Jesus, every form of sickness, every form of disease, I evict them out of your body right now. In the name of Jesus, I defy the reports of the doctors. In Jesus' mighty name, I defy the reports, the diagnosis of the doctor, and I impose the word of God. I impose the will of God. I impose the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has done. I impose it over that diagnosis right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare healing in Jesus' name. I declare restoration <coughs> in the name of Jesus. I feel God very strongly on this one about your health. I don't know if you want to pray for somebody. I feel God on, on, the, on the healthy issue, on the health issue. I feel him strongly upon it right now. If you know anybody in your in your in your in your sphere of influence, either your family or your friends or your colleagues at work, that is dealing with a particular sickness or disease, begin to declare. So the Bible says that He sent His word and he, it heals them and delivers them from all of their destruction. Begin to send this word to them wherever they may be. You have to remember that there is no barrier for the word of God. The word of God transcends everything. Begin to send the word of God to them right now. Say, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. L begin to send this encounter to them, this atmosphere to them, wherever they may be, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because you're no, you're, you shall no longer be called poor but you shall be called rich and wealthy. In the name of Jesus, you will have more than enough. You will have more than enough to do everything that you need to do. You will live in abundance in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father God, let there be a turnaround. Oh God, let there be a turnaround. Say, Father, let there be a turnaround. Let there be a turnaround. I have come to this mountain today for a divine turnaround. I have come to experience this encounter. I have come to have this momentous experience. Let there be a turnaround today in my life. God, let there be a turnaround today in my family. Lord, let there be a turnaround today in, in everything that concerns me, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Begin to declare a turnaround. The Lord promises me a turnaround concerning this program today, that there will be a turnaround for you. In the name of Jesus, <clears throat> there will be a turnaround. There will be a turnaround. There will be a things will turn around in your favor. Things will turn around in your favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. God of inexplicable wonders. I hear the Lord says he will do inexplicable wonders in your life this year. 
2022. I know we only have a few weeks left. But in this year, he will do something in your life that nobody can explain. That will be, it will be, he will say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I hear him say he will take the explanation out of the hands of the people who want to own you. People who want to lay a claim on you. People who want to say that if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for what they did, if it wasn't for what they gave, if it, if it wasn't for what they allowed to happen in your life. The Lord says that he will do something inexplicable wonders. They will not be able to explain it. The Lord is going to take it out of their hands because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. The world and those who dwell in it. God still has people across the world. If he has to bring somebody from Australia to help you, he will do it. The Lord says that he will take the ownership out of their hands and he will do in your life something that nobody can explain. Receive that today in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your word. We receive your words today. We receive your word today. Thank you for inexplicable wonders. Thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders that you are doing in the lives of your people. Thank you, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, as you are setting them free from those who want to own them. For those who are, you are setting them, you are, you are snatching them from the clutches of those who want to lay hold on their destiny. Who wants to say that if it wasn't for them, they would not be able to do what they are doing. Lord, I thank you because you are taking it out of their hands right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord says, I am the story changer. I will change your story. I will change your story and nothing is too far gone for me. Nothing is too far gone for me that I cannot reach. No one is too far gone for me that I cannot reach. Nobody is too far gone, says the Lord, that I cannot reach. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I sent this particular word to every prodigal child. In the name of Jesus Christ, every prodigal child that has gone away from their family, they may still be living at home, but in their mind and in their behaviors, they are away from their family. They have cut themselves off of their family right now in the name of jesus i sent this word to them to fetch them back home in the name of jesus christ yes oh lord you said nobody is too far gone for you no no prodigal is too far gone for you father god in the name of jesus we call them back home we call the prodigal back home we call them back home in the name of jesus hallelujah you are the story changer and you change our stories Kelebo satara bashanda, malebo kusanda rabasaya, rekandelebo shata. The Lord is about to change your story like never before. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Makuri basande lebo shanda rabasaya, yande lebo rasika yanda rabasata. Another person. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. The Lord just keeps interrupting me. My God. Another person in the Bible that had an encounter with God was Moses. Was Moses. He had an encounter with God which, which changed the trajectory of his whole life forever. His encounter with God, he, he had an experience that changed the trajectory of his life. Listen, what, what I'm about to say to you right now, I'm not saying it out of disrespect. Some of you, I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. Father God, I ask that you let your people hear your voice above my voice right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, the things that you believe about yourself are the things that are limiting you. And these things have been passed down to you from your parents. I don't mean any dishonor. I don't mean any disrespect. But I just want you to know that God has more for you. And you need to open your eyes and your mind to what God is saying to you. Because today is the day that he is going to begin to change your story forever. That the trajectory of your life will be changed for good forever. Moses had an encounter with God in Exodus chapter 3. We all know that story. You know, Moses and the burning bush. Right? He was going about his daily activities, tending the flock of his father-in-law. 
right, until he saw a burning bush. He saw a bush that was lit with fire, <laughs> but the, the, the bush was not consumed. Okay. That will attract the attention of anyone. It will attract my attention, certainly. If you saw that this fire is raging, but but the, the, the thing that fire is raging from, it's not actually burning. It's not, it's not consumed by fire. God lit the fire in the bush. Moses saw the fire in the bush, but he also saw that the bush was not burnt up. He also saw that the bush was not consumed. And this is what kick-started the rest of his life. That experience that he saw kick-started the rest of his life. Because in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 says, When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, that Moses had gone over to look, God called to Moses from within the bush. When he saw that he got the attention of Moses, right? Hallelujah. He went, he, he went to look at this thing that is that is unusual. Makaile Bakasanda. And the Bible says that God called unto him out from within the bush. God called out to him. Some of you are going are going to begin to encounter unusual occurrences because that experience was unusual. You are going to begin to have unusual experiences, okay? you are going to begin to encounter things that are that are not usual occurrences that are not usual that will kick start the next dimension of your life be sensitive like i said to you if you were not here at the beginning i said at the beginning i said be sensitive to the things that are happening around you to other people around you to you yourself be very, very sensitive because the Lord is moving in your life. There is an experience that you begin to have that will kick start. Somebody will say something around you and the Lord will give you a revelation or the Lord will prompt you and will give you words of wisdom to say in response to what that person has said to you or has said where you are that will kick start the rest of your life. By virtue of you being in this service today, an atmosphere has been opened over you that will begin to instigate unusual and unprecedented events happening in your life that will lead you to the fullness of God's purposes for your life. Things are going to happen that will lead you to the fullness of God's purposes for your life. In the same way God, God gave Moses, an unusual occurrence that kick-started the rest of his life, that slaughtered him, Masanda Rabashanda. It moved him and slaughtered him into, into his divine purpose for Moses, into his divine calling for Moses. God is going to orchestrate events. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He is going to orchestrate events that will literally slot you. It's not something that you will voluntarily move into. You just find yourself that these things are happening. Remember how we defined encounter, okay? Remember how we defined encounter at the beginning of this service, that it is something that happened unexpectedly, that it's not something that you prepared for. It's an encounter. It's a chance meeting. It's something that you, you happen upon. And the Lord is going to orchestrate experiences. He's going to orchestrate uh, 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 encounters for you. You're going to encounter things that will slot you into where he wants you to be. You just find yourself doing these things even though you did not plan to do them before. I want you to pay attention. Pay attention. Hallelujah. You see, we must not get to a point where we are too familiar with a gathering like this, where the presence of God is so strong and the prophetic words are being spoken because we 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 because when we do we stand the risk of missing what is being released and how this could impact our lives for good don't get too familiar with an environment like this with an atmosphere like this be like a child be excited be expectant be curious 
okay? Be, be curious be, and be expectant, be hungry for it. Because the Lord is going to orchestrate events that, that, is, that he's going to move you, he's going to move people, he's going to move things and slot you in the place where you want, where he wants you to be. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Say to the Lord now, say, Lord, I want to walk in the fullness of your purpose for my life. I want to walk in the fullness of your purpose for my life. Lead me to walk. Move me. Do whatever you have to do. Move whatever you have to do. Give me the experience, oh God. Give me the experience. It's not everybody that is going to have a burning bush experience. But God is still able to orchestrate events. Father God, orchestrate events that will slot me into place. Hallelujah. That will change my life for good, in the name of Jesus, that will put me where you want me to be. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I cry unto you today that you orchestrate such events, O oh Lord, because I want to walk in the fullness of your purpose for my life, in the fullness of your purpose for my family, in the fullness of your purpose for everything that I do, O oh God, for the purpose for which I am here in the earth today, for such a time as this. Father God, I want to walk in it. Give me the encounter, O oh Lord. Orchestrate the events in my life. In the name of Jesus. Kalabo Shanda. Mandala Borosikandara. I hope you are praying. Kalebo Sendere Boshanda. Kasaile Bakasataya. Father God, I cry unto you today that you will orchestrate events around me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Orchestrate events. Orchestrate people. Move people around. Move situations around that will slot me in the place where you want me to be. In the name of Jesus for such a time as this. Mighty God, I want to walk in the fullness of your purpose for my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says God called out Moses from inside the bush, right, and filled his hands with purpose. He called him from inside the bush. God called Moses and filled his hands with purpose that made history. Hallelujah. Moses was an ordinary shepherd just tending the flock of his father-in-law. But an encounter with God made him a great man that we still talk about today. The encounter with God made him an, a history maker. Right? And he served God in his own generation, like David did in his own generation as well. Ask God for a history-making encounter today. That your generation, you will make history. You will do something in your family that that decades and 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 centuries after you've gone, if Jesus tarries, they will still be talking about it. It is because of you that this changed in our family. It is because of you that this happened in our family. Ask the Lord to give you a, a, a history-making encounter today in the name of Jesus. You are not in your family just by accident. You are not, you're not living where you are living just by accident. You are not uh, associated with the people you are associated with just by accident. The Lord has put you in the place where you are for such a time as this. Ask him to fill your hands with purpose. Father God, fill my hands with purpose. In the same way that you fill the hands of Moses with purpose. Fill my hands with purpose. I don't want to just wake up and, and eat and just go through life, coast through life, same old, same old, every day. Mighty God, everything that you have for me. The Bible says in Psalm 139, I believe verse 16, it says that all the days of my life that was ordained for me has been written in your book before any one of them came into be all the days or every all the days of your life mashande rebo sanda makalebronda kasatanda raba rika satayanda raba shanta raba every day of your life has been written before god and right now i come against every familiar spirit and every interfering spirit that will want to interfere for with the days of your life that wants to that wants to Altar that wants to alter what God has ordained for you. I come against them right now and I prevail over them in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree that you will walk according to the purposes of God for your life. The Lord will fill your hand with purpose. And every day of your life that has been written in the book of God before one of them came to be shall be shall be made manifest to you. The Lord will reveal to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He will reveal to you. 
what no man can show you. In the same way that he revealed to Moses, Mary called Sandra He filled his hand with purpose. He filled the hand of Moses with purpose. The Lord will fill your hand with purpose. The Lord will give you a history-making experience in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, Moses was already destined to be a leader. He knew, you know how you know, you know in your spirit that you're supposed to be doing something. I tell you, the reason why you know is, is because it has been revealed to you in the spirit realm. You are a spirit being having a, a human experience, right? So you can tell, you may not be able to articulate it, maybe even from childhood. You know that this is what you're supposed to be doing. Moses knew that he was a leader. He had an inkling that he was supposed to be a leader. He had an idea what his purpose was, was before, before he fled Egypt. He fled Egypt and he fled, fled from, the, from the face of, from the presence of Pharaoh's court because he had killed an Egyptian. So he became a, a refugee. But an encounter with God restored his purpose. Oh my goodness. See, Moses thought that he had lost it when he fled Egypt. Because he was, he was, he was living in the court of Pharaoh before, remember? He was living in the palace of Pharaoh. But when he killed somebody and he had to flee so that he wouldn't be killed himself, he believed that that was it. He believed that, that was, it, it was over. But an encounter with God in that burning bush restored his purpose and his destiny. Because if you remember in, in, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, God told him, God says, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. So bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God restored his purpose. Wherever purpose may have been lost because of life's challenges, right now begin to claim it back. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever purpose you may have lost, wherever, wherever uh, opportunities that you may have lost before now, maybe because of something that you did in the past, and, and now you think that it's over, you've forgotten about it, the Lord is going to restore it. The, the Lord is going to restore those opportunities for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is going to restore your destiny. I speak restoration of destiny. I speak restoration of purpose over you. In the name of Jesus, begin to open your mouth right now and declare that nothing in your past, no, there is no past mistake that is strong enough or powerful enough to rob you of your destiny, to rob you of the purposes of God for your life. In the same way, that the Lord restored the purpose of, of Moses back to him. The Lord will restore your purpose. God gave him an encounter, a restorating encounter, that a, a, an encounter that gave him restoration of purpose. The Lord, as a result of this encounter today, the Lord will restore your purpose. Every purpose that is lost, I call it out now from the crevices of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, begin to walk in the fullness of the purpose of God for your life. In the name of Jesus, begin to walk in the fullness of your purpose. There will be a restoration. Every, every opportunity that is lost, I call it back today. In Jesus' mighty name, no matter how long it may have been, no matter how long it may have been that you have lost this purpose or your passion for your purpose. Some people, it's not even the purpose anymore. It is the passion. They don't even have the passion for it anymore. Some people believe that they, are, they don't deserve it anymore because of one thing or the other they may have done. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, the Bible says that whoever is in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. To forgive us our sin, number one. Number two, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I declare that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from every past mistake. In the name of Jesus Christ, that nothing will be able to rob you of your destiny. That nothing will be able to rob you of your passion for your destiny, for your passion, for your purpose. In the name of Jesus, arise and walk in the fullness of your purpose. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter how long it may have been, it's not too late. 
no matter how long it may have been that you have abandoned that thing, abandoned that idea, abandoned that dream because of what somebody did or did not do, because of what you did or you did not. Let me remind you of something. It's not all about what you did. It's not all about what you did. It's about what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. It's not about who you are. It's about who he is. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's all about your past mistakes. The blood of Jesus. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, that, he, that if, even if our sin is as red as crimson, that he is, he is strong enough the, the, to make them as white as snow as white as snow and i feel in my spirit right now that this this word is specifically for one person for you you are watching me right now you are looking at me and you are thinking you don't know what i have done yes i do not know what you have done but the lord knows what you have done and the lord says your time of restoration is now your time of restoration is now what are you going to do are you going to receive it or are you going to reject it are you going to open up and come out and, and come out of the guilt and come out of the shame or are you going to wallow in, in it the law says that your restoration is now your restoration is now because it's not about what you are able to do it's about the ability of god it's, a, it's not about your power it's about the power of god that is at work in you so it is not too late it is not too late. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is not too late. I don't know how long ago you have abandoned that idea. I don't know how long ago you have abandoned that project. I don't know how long ago you have abandoned that passion. The Lord says it is not too late. Malebo Sandarabashanda. Moses was 80 years old when God restored his destiny back to him. I declare and I decree restoration over you now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will, you will feel enabled from, from your spirit man, that, that your spirit man will rise up and overpower every negative voice, every contrary voice, every voice that is resisting you, that, 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 is, that is repressing you. I, I pray in Jesus' name that you will rise above it and you will begin to walk in the fullness of your purpose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. So that was Moses. Mo a, an encounter with God restored his destiny. An encounter with God restored his purpose. An encounter with God make him, made him a history maker. Hallelujah. I pray for you today as you encounter the God on this, on this altar today that the Lord will give you a history-making experience in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's look at another person who had a great encounter with God and things changed for him. This was Saul in 1 Samuel. Saul was another person that had an encounter that made him do what he could not do. Oh my God. Son, uh, Saul, who later became King Saul. When Saul had an encounter with Samuel the prophet, Samuel was a prophet of God. When, when Saul had an encounter with him, he was enabled or empowered to do what he had never done before. He prophesied. Because the Bible records that he was turned into a new man. He did what he could not do before. You are going to have an encounter with God. With, as a result of this encounter, you will be able, you will be given, a, 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 you will be turned into a new man, be given a new spirit, that you will be able to do what you, you had never done before. We are given the account of what Samuel told um, Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. For, and yes, I can hear you. I can hear I can hear your thoughts. You are saying, but but Saul Saul lost his his uh, you know his kingship. You know, Saul is not a good example. It's not about that. It's it's not about what Saul did, it's about what what the opportunity that was given to Saul, right? So the same opportunity is being given to you now. Okay. 
what are you going to do with it? Are you going to lose it in the same way Saul lost his? Are you going to lose it in the same way God lost, uh, in the same way that Saul lost his opportunity? That is what you need to think about. Because in, 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 in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 6 and 7, it reads, the spirit of the Lord woke, Samuel was saying to Saul here, right? Someone was saying to Saul, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hands find to do for God is with you. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. I'm speaking this over you right now. For some of you who are timid, you are maybe you are standing in front of some people and you are so timid or you are so overwhelmed by by those by that person or those people's personality that you you are, you are not able to do or say the right thing in front of those people because you you are you know you you feel overwhelmed by their personality. I say to you that the spirit of God will come upon you in power and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, child of God, do whatever your hands find to do. Why? Because God is with you. Because God is with you. I'm telling you, you, you have a great encounter with God today that will change the trajectory of your life forever. And this, this prophecy that Samuel gave to Saul was evidence in Saul's life as recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9 tells us that as Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart and all these signs were fulfilled that day. God, see, God will do what only he can do in your life. You need to believe that you are serving a supernatural God. Sometimes you want to be able to explain things. Sometimes you want to be able to understand things. Sometimes you want, you want to be able to make things make sense. You know, you remember that phrase, make it make sense. There are some things that will never make sense to you. There are some things that you can never make to make sense. Okay? Because the Bible tells us that God changed Saul's heart and all the signs were fulfilled that day. And all the signs were fulfilled that day. You see, there is an anointing huh, that can change you into a new person. There is an anointing that can come upon you, that the Spirit of God will come upon you so powerfully that will turn you into a new person, that will give you a new, a, a, a new courage, that will give you a new strength, hallelujah, that will give you a new outlook on life, that the Spirit of God will come upon you so powerfully and change you into a different person. That the Spirit of God will take over your mind. That the Spirit of God will take over your heart. And the Spirit of God will begin to animate you. The Spirit, you know, when you are you know, you know, when you're watching cartoons in, in on the telly, you know, it's somebody that, that is animating those those things, those those cartoon um drawings that you're seeing. That the Spirit of God is able to animate you and make you to do what God wants you to do. I make you to be what God wants you to be. I make you to say what God wants you to say. Oh my God. Reba <clears throat> Shanda. Say, I want you to say that as a result of your encounter today with the Father, I want you to ask him to place an anointing on you today that will propel you into destiny and enable you to do what you have never done before. The anointing of God came upon Saul that propelled him into destiny and that he was able to do what he had never done before. Put to aside for a minute that he lost it. That was, that was a, a choice, a personal choice. But right now you are being given the same opportunity. Malabo Sanda Rabashanda. That the Spirit of God will come upon you. That will enable you to do the things that you have never been able to do before. That it, the Spirit of God will come upon you in power and propel you into destiny and enable you to, 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 
to do what you have never done before. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that it will come so powerfully upon us and change our hearts and change our minds and change us from the inside out. Father God, we receive a new mind in the name of Jesus Christ, the mind of Christ. Yes, the mind of Christ. Turn us into a new man. Ask him to turn you into a new man. And man here is not gender specific. It's not about gender. It's about your position in Christ Jesus right now. Begin to ask God. Say, let your power, let your presence, let your Holy Spirit come upon me today that will propel me into destiny and enable me, enable me, empower me, animate me, oh Lord. Animate me, oh Lord. Move me by by your spirit move me by your spirit in the name of jesus to be able to do the things that i've never done before to be able to say the things that i should have said so many years before but i have never been able to say father god let your presence come upon me in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah yes lord saul did not even know that he was supposed to be prophetic or even a king that's not what he was looking for he was just he didn't know what he was that he was supposed to be prophetic or king before god found him god located him and gave him an encounter that he directed him to his purpose you see saul was out in the field looking for the donkeys of his father but god was looking for him to be king over israel Sometimes we are going about doing our own things. I, I know of many ministers of God, many pastors who, who are, you know, they're doctors. Some of them, you know, they're, they're, they're flourishing in their medical career until God found them and God redirected them. You see, somebody said that the, the happiest man in the world is a man who is right at the center of the will of God for his life. Okay, so when you're at the center of the will of God for your life, even when the struggle comes, the struggle will be made to be looked as if it's easy. Okay? God located him. God located Saul. He didn't know that he had that in him. He didn't know that he was supposed to be prophetic, that he was supposed to be prophesying. He didn't know that he was supposed to be king over Israel. He was, he was looking for, for his father's donkeys, God was looking for him. Look at that. Hamashandala Brosendi. <laughs> Ask the Lord to find you where you are. I don't know if you are if you are doing something right now, you're involved in maybe a business or whatever it is that you are doing, that you that you know God wants to relocate you. Say, Lord, well, here I am, relocate me. Relocate me. I mean, relocate me and relocate me locate me find me and relocate me in the name of jesus christ and if you know any member of your family or your friends or loved ones that you want to intercede for hallelujah that that may have missed their way ask the lord to locate them today and redirect them back into their original purpose in the name of jesus yes lord father god we ask that you will redirect your people those who are lost those who are doing things that they're not supposed to do those who have left their families i hear the lord say that there are some people you have left your marriage you have left your family and you are looking for something else somewhere the lord says i am redirecting you back to your original place the lord is going to locate you and redirect direct you back and the Lord says don't resist him because if you resist him it will be very difficult you'll find life very difficult because you will not find joy that thing ah thank you holy spirit i hear the lord says i'm taste i'm taking that taste away from your mouth and that place where you had found joy before will not be pleasant for you anymore because i am relocating you i'm redirecting you back to your original place Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for restoration. If you know the person that this prophecy is for, I encourage you to pray for their spouse because they will go back to their spouse. I encourage you to pray for their spouse so that their spouse will be willing and ready to receive them back home. 
okay this is one of the very few times where i find mini online ministry a little bit difficult because i don't know who you are so i can't counsel you i don't know who your pastor is but the lord says that he's taking the the test away from your mouth and you shouldn't don't resist god because you are full of bitterness right now you are full of self uh, self pity that it's because of this and because of that you are justifying the reason why you left your wife and your children the lord says that he is redirecting you back there humble yourself under the hand of god and let him heal your heart and let him heal your home children of god if you know who this is for please intercede for them pray for them and pray for their spouse okay because a restoration is about to happen a restoration is about to happen hallelujah thank you holy spirit a restoration is about to happen the lord is going to take that back that man back to his family and restore his family and i hear the lord say don't listen to your to your family members who think because they love you they will advise you against going back to your to your wife and your children you will not account yourself to your family member says the lord you will account yourself to me Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please, Father, let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for this man. We thank you for your son, O oh Lord. Because it, 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 the Bible says that he whom you love, you chastise, and you correct the son that you have accepted. Father God, I thank you for this son of yours that you have corrected right now. I pray, O oh Lord, for a teachable spirit. I pray, O oh Lord, for a heart that, is, that will humble, a pliable heart, that will humble himself before you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, that will listen to your counsel and, and go back to his family. God, I pray for his wife and children, that you will heal their hearts, O oh Lord, that you will let forgiveness reign in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will bind them together again with your cord that cannot be broken, that their healing and their restoration will be permanent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, going back to our, I love it when the Lord in, just just interrupts us and and does what He wants to do among us. God is good. Yes, yeah, some of you also are perhaps lost in a career path that is different to what God has intended for you. So you are just coasting through life doing a job that does not satisfy you or bring you any sense of fulfillment ask god for this anointing to come upon you today and redirect you to god's plan for your life in the name of jesus christ the anointing that came upon saul that redirected redirected him back to the original will of god father god i prayed for your children in the name of jesus christ Oh, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. And as, as I mentioned earlier on, unfortunately, we read that Saul lost his anointing and the, pre and he lo and the presence of God left him. I, I pray for you today in Jesus' name. I want you to declare that every encounter that you have today, every experience that you have today, whatever prophecy that you have received today, that the anointing of God has put upon you today, you will not lose any of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not lose any of it. You will not lose. I pray for you in Jesus' mind name that the the experiences that you have today that the words that the lord has spoken to you today as a result of this encounter i declare and i decree that you will not lose it you will not lose your anointing you will not lose the encounter in the name of jesus christ the ability to be sensitive to the presence of god 24 7 the lord will give it unto you today in the name of jesus hallelujah thank you father god Thank you, Lord. Our main text today tells us about how Zechariah had an encounter with God. Remember, we started with Zechariah and Elizabeth. He had an encounter with God and, and his life and his wife's life changed dramatically forever. That, you know, our main text reads, Luke 124, it says, Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and and she hid herself for five months saying the lord has done this for me she said in these days he has shown his favor and taken my disgrace away 
among the people. In these days, the Lord has done this. In these days, Kashile Brosikaya, as a result of that encounter, the Lord removed her reproach. The Lord removed her disgrace. I want you to say, Father God, give me an encounter today that will remove my disgrace from among the people. Every situation that is causing shame, that is causing embarrassment, must be removed from my life today in the name of Jesus. Begin to declare it. Every, every situation, every event, every occurrence that will bring embarrassment, that will bring reproach, that will bring shame, that is causing people to point finger at me, that is causing people to call me all kinds of things. Father, remove those things right now in the name of Jesus. Remove those things right now. As a result of this encounter today, remove the embarrassing circumstances, remove the embarrassing my lebron daraba shante lebro sekeye jende lebaraba baba baba ye kende lebro sikana daraba shataya. Remove it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Remove it, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus. I declare. Clear and I decree over you that every circumstance, every situation, every event, every occurrence, whatever it is that may what that is causing embarrassment in your life, that is bringing shame and reproach, that people are calling you by that thing. I declare to them they're removed out of your life in the name of Jesus. They're removed out of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Because the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 39, it says, Take away my disgrace, which I dread, for your judgments are good. Ask the Lord to take it away. In the name of Jesus, take it away. Oh God, Kashale Bro Satan Darabasaya. In the name of Jesus, take it away, oh God. Remove every shameful situation. Anything that is causing disgrace, that is causing embarrassment. Hallelujah. Masale Bro Darabashata. For the Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 5. Psalm 34 verse 5 says, those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. Those who look to him are radiant. Ha, hallelujah. And their faces are never covered with shame. I hear the Lord say that I will show you favor. I will show you so much favor that will take away the disgrace. Thank you, O oh Lord. I want you to begin to thank God for that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Those who look to you are radiant. Those who look to you are radiant. Our eyes are upon you. Take away every embarrassing situation in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. The Lord says that he will even prevent them. He will prevent them. That, that, not that those situations are in your life already, but there are some things that, 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 that the enemy wants to orchestrate in your life that will bring embarrassment to you. The Lord says that he will prevent them. Yes, Lord, prevent them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Every circumstance, every event, every occurrence that will want to bring disgrace into us. Father God, prevent them in the name of Jesus and don't allow our face to be covered with shame. In the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to do wonders in your life that will wipe away every embarrassment in the same way that he did for elizabeth that wiped away her embarrassment ask the lord to do wonders in your life thank you holy spirit of god do wonders in our lives oh god that will wipe away every embarrassment in the name of jesus father we thank you for this encounter today i want you to be to begin to thank god for this wonderful encounter today hallelujah for this great encounter today for everything that god has done in your life on this mountain today begin to thank him and begin to declare that you will not lose any every word of prophecy shall be fulfilled at the appropriate time in the name of jesus there shall be no delay there shall be no delay in the name of Jesus. Every word of prophecy that has gone out, for it is written that so shall it be, that every word that has proceeded out of my mouth will not return to me void, but they shall fulfill the purpose for which they have been sent. I declare and I decree in Jesus' name that every word of prophecy that has gone out concerning you today will not return empty, but will fulfill 
the purposes for which they have been sent in the name of Jesus. For the Lord is watching over his words to perform it. There shall be a performance of the word of God in your life. There shall be a performance of every word of prophecy in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name that I have to release upon you. When I was preparing for this uh, program, and the Lord says to tell you that the encounter, I wrote it down so that I won't forget, even though I can still see the picture, I can still see the image, but so I will not forget, I wrote it down. So I'm going to share it with you now, and we're going to share the grace. Hallelujah. The encounter that you have received with the Lord today will open a portal in the spirit realm like a portal will be open. I saw a portal open in the spirit realm and then will put you in a room where things are not subject to the laws of this natural realm. So the portal is open and you are put in a room in the spirit realm. And as I said to you, this is a spiritual thing. Don't try to make sense of it. Just go with what the Lord is saying. Listen to the voice of God and allow him to minister to your spirit right now. It says the portal is open in the, heaven, in the heavenly realm and you are being put in a room. You are actually in a room right now where things are not subject to the laws of this natural realm. And here in this room, your voice carries authority. Here in this room, when you speak, your void commands authority in the natural realm because you are speaking from that room in the spirit realm, okay? Your voice commands authority. And here in this room, nothing is impossible for you. And the Lord wants me to pause and sound a note of warning here that don't try to manipulate this, this privilege. Don't, tr don't try to... Don't insert your own flesh into it and try to manipulate it because things will begin to happen for you, unusual things, okay? So here in this room, your voice carries authority and in this room, nothing is impossible for you. Here in this room, you are clothed with favor. You attract favor. It's like, you know, it's like when you're wearing a perfume that, that smells so beautifully that attracts people to you that, People want, to, oh, what's that perfume you're wearing? So, so that is how God is clothing you with favor in that room. That and 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 you attract favor. You are clothed in favor, you attract favor, you attract people, okay? And you will begin to walk in a dimension that is higher and superior to anything you have ever known or seen before. And things that were not possible before will become very easy for you. Because of your encounter with me today, says the Lord, I am anointing you for greater and better. I am taking off of you today the garment of reproach and shame, the garment of failure, the garment of weaknesses. I take off of you the garment of sickness and diseases, and I put on you the garment of power and authority. You are wearing a garment of power and authority. And the Lord says, I am anointing you for greater things than you have ever seen before. But you must be careful and respectful of how you carry this anointing. You must be careful and respectful of how you carry this anointing. Don't allow pride to come into your life because this is not something that you have acquired by your own power. Don't ever be tempted to allow pride to come over you. Be careful how you steward and be respectful of this new anointing. There is a divine turnaround. I will turn around the direction. Then I saw, at first I wrote vehicle, you know, but the Lord says, no, it's, it's a horse. 
like you are in a horse or you're on a horse rather right the lord says that i have taken i will turn around the direction of 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 the horse i will turn around the direction of the vehicle because i've taken the wheel i have taken the rein of the horse of your destiny so i will turn you around back on course so the rain you know what you know you know what is the rain that you're using to ride your horse the lord says that he's taking over that rain so don't resist god don't resist god in this season let him do what he wants to do in your life may be funny to your flesh may be it definitely will be unusual feel unusual ask the lord to teach you to show you how to navigate your new season how to navigate this new experience how to navigate your new normal so that you will not lose it I am the Lord, says the Spirit of God. And so, Father, we just thank you for a wonderful time in your presence today. You promised to be with us and you haven't failed. And so we thank you. I thank you for your people. We thank you. We receive your words today in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the new experiences, for the new unusual occurrences. We thank you, oh Lord, for dreams. Some of you are going to be dreaming more than ever before. Your prophetic anointing is coming back. Your prophetic gift, your prophetic gift is coming back upon you. Some of you are seers. Some of you, the Lord will speak to you. Hallelujah. The Lord will speak to you so much that it will you hear him almost in your spirit almost as if you're hearing me right now that your sensitivity to the lord will be so heightened in this season father god i thank you i thank you for the restoration of our giftings for of, of people who, whom you are restoring their pro prophetic gifts in. I thank you, oh God, for the new things that you are doing in all of our lives. I thank you for the great encounter. Help us, oh God. Help us to steward this new season in the name of Jesus. Help us to not disappoint you, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us to not squander these new experiences, to not waste it, oh Lord. But Father, we will humble ourselves before you and we will be led by you, we will be directed by you. For your word says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We we are your sons, O oh Lord. We ask in Jesus' name that you will help us, you will direct us, you will show us, help us to maintain that which you have bestowed upon us today. Thank you, Father, for the healings that have taken place. Thank you for the restorations that have taken place. Thank you, mighty God, for re the redirection that is taking place. We give you praise, Father. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. And we share the grace right now. I declare over your people that your grace will be upon them, that the grace of God will be upon you perpetually in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise to God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. I hope that you have been blessed today. I hope that you have been truly, truly blessed. Please join us tomorrow for our global fellowship. We meet on this platform. Now that uh, the UK is going back, into, uh, uh, it's, it's turning the clock back by one hour. For my friends who are in Nigeria, it's going to be your 6 p.m. tomorrow. Please make every effort to join us. It is going to be the last Sunday of the month tomorrow. It has been our month of harvest. Hallelujah. It's a, it has been our month of harvest this month. And I know that I have been harvesting. I, I hope that you have been harvesting as well because you have if you have been engaging with with the word that has the prophetic word that has that have been coming out on this platform, you know, and and if you haven't uh, been gathering don't worry the word of god has gone forth it will never return empty i trust that you have been blessed by today's message for more inspirational and life transforming messages head over to our facebook page at liberty ministries international or our youtube channel also at liberty ministries international while you are there don't forget to subscribe like and share our videos so that more people can also be blessed Join us next time for more life-transforming messages. Destiny awaits you.